for the sake of those depending on you don't give up according to scripture the first sign that a transaction has been complete from heaven to earth is peace can i tell you everything you get minus god will kill you no matter how important it is to you if you have to drop god to get it it's only a matter of time i've had the honor of studying revivals i've had the honor of meeting a few people in their lifetime who spearheaded revivals across the nations of the earth and every time i've had the honor of meeting any of these people the question i always ask them is what was the secret of the hand of god upon your life or upon the person you walked with i remember traveling to a particular nation and i met one of the fathers of faith and he told me he was the one who used to interpret for tl osmond and maurice Cerullo. once upon a time they slept on the same bed and i said sir please let me ask you a question what did they do how did they pray what was their consecration like don't show me the videos of the miracles no i want to know what was the price that was paid with god that made god to trust them with such levels of grace there are many of you who are here i'm sure that most of you are not even interested in asking god's servant or asking the people around you most people want impartation they are not interested in knowing the price is the reason why they fall down and stand up and nothing happens there is a real price for power power is not cheap i tell you it doesn't matter who gives you whether the devil or god power in any case is not cheap do you know what it took jesus to be exalted as lord and savior his life that name that was given to him the price for that name the Bible says because he gave himself to die even the death on the cross. Wherefore, on account of this, on account of the aforementioned, God had so highly exalted him and given him an office. And that that office was above every other office. That when you invoke the powers behind that office, every knee bows of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue must confess to the Lordship of Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember one time when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was like a dead man on the ground. And he stretched his right hand. You know, I say this, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the globe, so I'm very careful to say this. People talk about having encounters with Jesus today, and it's not for me to judge any man's encounter. But can I tell you, by the authority of Scripture, most of the Jesus people are meeting. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. When you meet the Jesus of the Bible, you will never be normal again. Go and read your Bible. Are we together? When Saul met Jesus, it's not whether he wanted to change or not. The, encounter, the impact of that encounter changed his life forever. When the Lord Jesus appeared to me, I was like a dead man. How he came into my room, I had no, no use of door, no use of matter, had no power over him. And here was the young man lying down on the ground. And he looked at me. His mouth was not moving, but I was hearing what he was saying. A spirit communication beyond the realm of words. And then he stretched his right hand towards me. Brothers and sisters, light that left his majesty and entered me. How a human being survives that light is like taking the light from the sun and putting it inside an ant. How I did not die is a question I will ask him when we see his face. Hallelujah. And then when that happened, it took me more than one year to be back to myself. I was not normal again. I'm telling you, I didn't live like a normal human being again. My priorities shifted. My appetite shifted. It was as if it was someone who had some kind of thing wrong with him. That is the impact of an encounter with his majesty. But from that experience, when I opened my Bible, it was like something happened to me. Like somebody put something inside me. What is the meaning of this? 
take it high for me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, oh, rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Spirit of power, rest on me. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, But surely I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Full of power. Man of God, full of power. Businessman, full of power. And then you will see yourself manifesting dimensions that no force in Ghana. It doesn't matter how long it was there. You will scatter it and give way as if the devil does not exist. Preacher, pay the price. Let the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon you. And you will see that there is no limit to your rising. Do you believe what I'm telling you? The power of the Spirit. T.L. Osborne went to India. And he went to preach. When he was done preaching... Powerless preaching. He made an altar call and nobody came. They almost chased him out of that place. And he was angry in the spirit. And he said, he went back and said, God, what is the meaning of this? And God told him, your message is correct. But it was not backed up with power. And the Bible says, he, I mean, at least he tells us that he paid the price and when genuine power landed on his head, he went back to India again. And when he was preaching, people were looking at him. And he said, where is the blind? Come. Where is this? Come. He called certain people and miracles began to erupt there. And the people started to shout. One sermon that power preaches is greater than a thousand words. I hope you know that the power of God is also an evangelist. And there is a sermon he can preach. There is an audience that only hears the sermon of power. I vowed before God, as a man of God, that I will never travel to any land and any nation just to go and deliver a nice lecture and return back. It's my covenant with God that I will never step my feet upon a nation. And then at the end of it, they just say, wow, this nice preacher came. Return back in peace. God bless you. No. Our assignment is to shift climate. That when you step into territories, Elijah was a man of like passion. Elijah did not announce in a radio station that rain will not come. From one position, he said there shall be no rain over a space of three and a half years. That when you are full of power, when you land in a territory, the territorial forces acknowledge. Ah, Jesus I know, Paul I know, Joshua Selman I know. You can add your name to the list. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Thank you for always visiting our channel. I believe you have been blessed by that message. For more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also share this video with all your friends. See you in our next video. God bless you.